Have you ever been, yes you have, or you wouldn't be here, right? You've been in these meetings when, when Holy Spirit just rolls in. Are those your favorite? Don't you just, you don't even have to say anything? Just, that's the best. We just worship and everybody gets knocked flat on their face. That's like, that's my favorite. Nobody remembers who's speaking. Nobody, um, nobody buys the download, nothing. It's just, it's everybody's just out. Just, but everybody's life's transformed. And I don't know, just seeing you, it, it helps me. It really does. I'm so happy to see you too. Yes. Okay, I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to share something about that. And, and a now time, and a then time, and a time that we're pressing in for. So I want to read from 2 Corinthians. Today, I was just so hungry. I got in from New York. God just crashed in the city. It's just, oh, it was, yeah. Oh. It was just so amazing. If I, I, somebody else will tell you where, but it'll, it'll rock your boat. And I got to go, one of my friends knows me really well, and, and um, when I'm away from home, uh, sometimes I, I'm really missing some things, you know, and I've been on a lot of speedboats lately, like a lot of speedboats because of all that we're doing in the relief uh, area and, and sharing the gospel area. And because we can't go, we can't leave slowly because of some issues. Um, we have to have speedboats so we can leave very quickly when we need to. So we have the big boats with the sails. It's just so, oh, that's just, that's the way to go. And they fit tons and tons and tons of food in them. And we just love that. But, but then there's the speedboat. And that speedboat has to go really, really fast to get you there faster because... There's so many people that need Jesus and so many people hungry. But it also has to get you out if things are escalating. So God knows he created all of us for what we do, don't you think? Like, I, I love what God gave me to do. I love it. I love the body of Christ. I love being here. I just, I love being with friends, family, people. I, I just love it. So anyway, God knows that. So how are you going to kind of step in when you're in another nation? So like here. And how are you going to step in? And somebody, just a friend just knows me. And so he, he texts me. He goes, we're going on an adventure. And I was so excited, like, we're going on an adventure in America? Yeah! And I was like, yes! And, and so we couldn't get off the floor. Really, we, and, uh, the Lord said it was dessert. <laughs> and I was telling Rebecca, I, I, she was trying to be administrative, and she's so anointed, so prophetic. And, and I grabbed her, and I, I, was telling, I was telling Joseph and Sean, too, just earlier, but... We were in this glory realm, and I just tapped her, and I said, it's dessert time. And it, dessert's not necessary. Do you understand? Do you know that? So in the spirit, there are times where God just, the meat is flowing, like the meat of the word, and the power is flowing, bam. But then there's this, it's like this sweetness, the dessert. He just comes in, and it's after, you know, it's after the, after the main meal, what we ate uh, of his word, and we experienced in him, and, and, and I, I just felt it, and I, and I got so undone. He just poof, dropped in, and that was it. Like, we couldn't, we couldn't really, we just couldn't. And, and uh, the Lord started speaking to me, and I'm weeping, and I'm just like, oh, wow. Yeah, I'll say. I, we, were, we were in Wall Street, at Wall Street, Wall Street. We were at Wall Street. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit just, 
And I'm there and I'm thinking, whoa, we're having dessert now at Wall in Wall Street. There's no physical food, do you know what I mean? It's just all Holy Spirit. And it was so powerful. And then I'm thinking, wait, but I'm about to go on an adventure. And I'm gonna miss this boat. I don't wanna miss the boat. I don't wanna miss the adventure, but it's time. The presence of God is dropping in the room. And part of me is like, I don't wanna miss the adventure. I don't wanna miss the boat. But Lord, if you are giving out your sweetness, if you are pouring your very self out right in this room, Lord, it, it doesn't matter. My schedule's your schedule. and. All, and as soon as I yielded to that, it just was undone. And then eventually, you could just feel the Holy Spirit just lift. And there were ways to get out. We set off an alarm, getting out somehow to get into this car with dark windows. Not because I don't like people, but I wanted to get to where I had to get to where I was going. And it was just so we're in there. And we get... And the, the captain of the boat says, you know, you, basically he's telling my friend, you missed the boat, dude. But he's like, we'll just get another one. So he did. And I'm thinking when I'm around just going on this speedboat, now I'm on, I, I went from this meeting there to this speedboat and we're just speeding all over the harbor and we stop in front of the Statue of Liberty and then we speed and it's like got motorcycle seats and I'm like, ah. God knows me. Like God knows me, I love speed. I, I, I love speed, I like to go fast and I, I like to go really fast and and I'm in New York going, yeah. And I just, I just felt the joy of the Lord because God knows me. But I also felt the joy of the Lord that I got to, I got to have dessert, which wasn't necessary. I could have just said, no, 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 I'm good. Thank you, God. I feel good. I'm good. Thank you, Lord. I feel good. This is great. No, if God is pouring out his sweetness, if God is stepping in with his manifest presence, I'm going to miss any boat I need to miss because there will be another boat because God will make a way. And there's something about like, Randy and your life that you just keep on believing. We're going to keep on going. We're going to keep on. Do you love that? Because a lot of people kind of done that, been there, done that. We're good. What are we doing next? But if you will understand who God is and that he wants to give you more of himself, but literally he knows exactly what you're doing next. And the joy of that next, and then I started seeing all, th all kinds of things over America. And I started seeing how things were going through in our country that many things were going through, you're gonna go through in America. And as I'm on that speedboat going through and I'm fr in front of the P Statue of Liberty and I'm in front of, you know, we're in the financial district and we're here and we're there and, and God just keeps showing me things and I'm like, whoa. Okay, I don't think they're ready for this. I don't know if they want to hear this. But I feel like people are sent, sent a little bit ahead to tell you this is your greatest time to shine. This is not your time to be afraid. This is your time to shine. This is your time to shine. God's got this. God's got this and God's got you. So... I was preparing this afternoon. I was just in my room worshiping and just soaking. And it, I didn't have a lot of time, but it was just, oh, I love to worship in between worship meetings. And just, oh, Jesus. And I prepared, I actually prepared a message. And then I got here. Oh, well, we were praying. And then it's like, nope, that's not it. I'm like, Lord. I prepared. 
So could we just, you know, even maybe once in a while have that one? But I heard him. And it's from 2 Corinthians. This is what I, what I got now. <laughs> I might have read this scripture before. Do you think that might be okay? If you read scriptures more than once, I told a lot of people my favorite translation right now is one that I don't understand. It's the Kimoni. I love the Kimoni translation. Because it's the first time the Kinmoni have ever had the word of God in their heart language. And now they're coming to Jesus like never before. And they're hearing the Kinmoni audio Bibles. And we're going in there. It doesn't matter if we, we don't know if we're coming back. Every time. You understand late. You totally get this. You understand, Jennifer. You're praying, right? Like, ah! Okay, there he goes. Oh, well, yay. I gave him to you. You know, Roland's at home right now in Mozambique praying for us. And um, I think that's really powerful. And we all have whatever we have, our part to play. So here it is, 8.55. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes. That's an Amen. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he is the one whom Timothy, Silas, and I have preached to you. That's Apostle Paul. And he has never been both a yes and a no. He has always been and always will be a resounding yes. For all God's promises find their yes of fulfillment in him. And his yes and our amen ascend to God and bring him glory. So, I always, you know, I, I'm really grateful that Randy laid hands on me 24 years ago. I, I, I am. But, but I'm also wondering about you receiving whatever you called to receive sometimes. Because if you don't understand the seriousness of what God wants to do with your little life, and you don't understand the cost of what God wants to do with your little life, or you take it flippantly or tritely, what God wants to do with your little life, you might just want to touch that another and another and another. I love to be touched every day, but I'm ready. Yes, Lord. But there's something about your yes. Not your yes when it's easy. Not your yes when it's just presence is falling and you're just undone and you never want to go anywhere but that place. But a yes in the midst of the shaking, in the midst of the waves, in the midst of the sun, in the midst of the shooting, in the midst of the beating, in the midst of the jail, in the midst of people not understanding you or in your world, people attacking you on the internet, whatever. There has to be something inside of you with yes, God has. A yes inside of you that says, I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. I will stand firm. I will stand with you, Jesus, forever because you are worthy. Whether I'm abounded or abased, whether I'm sleeping out in a bush bush under a coconut tree or I'm, somebody put me in a six star in Dubai, whether I'm walking through the mud or flying in a helicopter. My yes is the same yes every day. It's not a wimpy, yes. I used to have that, yes, anything bush, anything out there, anything unreached people group, that's my favorite yes. But coming here would be like, Yes, you know, the name of the conference is so embarrassing and you check in and you're like, oh, you know, I'm just being honest, like, (sighs) 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 (sighs)
But then you get here and you realize, wait, wait a minute. We're all hungry. We're hungry because we're here. We're thirsty. And then when you get here and you realize, wait a minute, there's a hunger in this room, then the yes, the Lord just compels you for a greater yes. And you're not just a yes when you're in your most comfortable place, which for me and you are very different. Your yes is a yes to God wherever you are. Your yes, is there a yes inside of you? Yes. They're just like, I don't care what it takes. Well, I don't know. It feels too late. Maybe it's the first night. Just, maybe it's because, you ever felt that way, Randy, where one meeting is so awesome that the next one you're like, oh, please, God, do it again. Do you ever feel that, or is it just me? You, you're just like, some people think we're just like, yes, it's great. No, there has to be a yes, your yes, and our yes, and his yes. And, and you showed up, and you're in this hotel, and you got here, and there has to be this thing inside of you that's like, I will not be denied. I'm not leaving this place un unless I'm transformed. Like, I showed up because I want God. I showed up here because I want God. I want more of God, and I want to be with you who want more of God. There's something about the yes, not just when it's an easy yes. Do you think anything in me ever thought, you know, as a missionary called to the poorest people on the planet that I'd be where I was Sunday? or Friday, or Saturday, which there's just, what was, or today? What, what's God thinking? God hears our yes. God hears our yes cry. God hears our heart when we say, we don't care. Where, whatever you wanna do, we're doing it. Whatever you want to say, we're, we're going to say it with you. Wherever you want to go, we're going to go there with you. It's a yes. It's a yes. It's a yes. Now it is God himself who has anointed us. Did he just anoint a few? God has no lesser sons. God has no lesser daughters. He anoints every yielded child. Everyone in this room has a place. Every single one including the people that don't even know him yet. He has destined them to come in. We are going to shine, right? We're going to shine in this place. So he himself has anointed us, and he constantly is strengthening both you and us in union with Christ, and he knows us. He knows we are his since he has stamped us with his seal of love over our hearts. And he has given us the Holy Spirit like an engagement ring is given to a bride, a down payment of the blessings to come. See, that's what happens when Holy Spirit crashes in on you. It's like a holy seal. Like, do you want that? It's a holy seal. It, literally, you could feel it in your spirit. Like, Lord, I want to be sealed. And I want to say yes. And I want to say yes not once but every day. If you are betrothed, if you are married. I've been married 40 years in May. Thank you, Jesus. 40 years. That's a beautiful thing. Yes, you should rejoice. Because that's a beautiful thing. It's not an easy thing. It's a beautiful thing. It is a continual yes every day. Yes. Blessings. Yes. 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 Well, the Lord has called us to a continual yes with him. And many break that covenant. Many run away and they do their own little thing and then they do their other little thing and then they come back and it's like, here I am again. And he just keeps drawing and drawing and drawing. He has anointed us. He has destined us. He has stamped us with the seal of love. 
So have you ever been in a corporate stamping service? Have you? We're a corporate stamping service. This is the best. You guys have. You just didn't call it that. So that's what Alan, I'm going to talk about that. So a corporate stamping service. So we are in our base. We're at our base in central Mozambique. And, and God just, he just came, didn't he? he? You weren't a happy camper at all. Randy didn't show up because he, something happened and he couldn't come. So you sent your friends. We're all friends to this day. Yeah. You moved here. Right. He, didn't, he couldn't come. But nobody knew anybody's name anyway. So they didn't know who Randy was. We did. We rented a stadium. But it's okay. Because... Because God, it's just, it's fun, you know? But, but if, if you showed a picture, he's just a white guy. Nobody, like, switch him out with another white guy. It, 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 it's, just, it, it's just, I'm just being honest, you know? They don't know until Holy Spirit crashes in. Then they're like, oh! They, but they still wouldn't recognize him later, you know? It's okay, it's just, it's life. So, I remember he wasn't there, and a bunch of your friends came, which was really cool, and we had the best accommodation. It, it, the only place we could find was a brothel. And, and I, I mean, I was a, a little, you know, embarrassed because these guys had homes, and you're, like, hugging your wife. Yes, good. But um, they're, they're men of God, and so... That was all there was. And, I, you know, we told them we didn't want it by the hour. We were going to stay. The, I'm just being honest. The whole night we were going to sleep there. Some of you are worried. But I'm just, that was all there was. That was that or the dirt. So I guess they're both kind of, anyway. Um, nobody slept. None of them slept. One of them was an AG, Assemblies of God, District Superintendent. And... <laughs> He's, he's amazing. He's still my friend to this day. And, and his wife is just like, that was, yay. And he won't, and no, you know, there's no water, no electricity. So you guys all look pretty rough. You grew a beard. That's smart. Um, but they're up in the morning. Hi, guys. Did any of you sleep? They're like, uh, we're going to go worship. Uh, nobody feel, everybody's like, uh. Oh, great. Do you love this? This experience in God, this holy glory. We're in Mozambique. The miracles are just amazing. Well, there's stuff in between. So we show up, you know, we're in this field in our base there. And we show up and we're just worshiping, and nobody knows how to really play instruments unless they're bongo drums. Mercifully, we had a bunch of bongo drums. Nobody ever played a guitar. Nobody ever, a keyboard, where were you going to get that or learn to play that? So if they got one, it would be like, bam, 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 bam. No, seriously, for 45 minutes. Until somebody, we were just like, bam, bam, bam. I want to just scream or something. This is just hard. If they say, uh, you know, wet to not yet another moment, I'm going to just, I feel like in love hitting somebody. Because I just, I love you, but, you know, you're singing the same words 25 minutes. It's wet to not yet, wet to not yet, wet to not yet, so wet. Okay, we did. We walk in with Jesus here. Can we change the key? <laughs> to sing, you know. And, they're, and the, everybody's singing. The witch doctors were there in force. There were probably 12 or so. The mocking teenagers were there in force. They were there. I mean, nobody ever pays to get in anything. That would be nuts. <laughs> so we're all there. And these guys, and, and suddenly, except for one, one guy, one guy, everybody else fell down flat. 
I was already face down, and the Lord told me to look. I was face down, I, I opened my eyes. I mean, heavy weighty glory fell. And I see this one big American. I mean, you're not a little stick guy. You're like tall, strong guy, and he's there. He's holding a pole, I look at him. I don't know what he's doing holding a pole. Everybody's flattened. The witch doctors are flattened. The children are flattened. Everybody, everybody's flattened. The mockers are flattened. Everybody's flattened, but this one American dude, a one, one white guy, he's holding on to this pole. I didn't know why, why would anyone do that? Why would you, like, everybody, I mean, we're talking thousands of people. <laughs> just, nobody said, more, Lord. It just, we just said, weta, 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 He's like, I heard you already. And it just wham. And however, I mean, it was, it was, I'll never forget it as long as I live. And, and I remember looking and here's this one pale dude holding onto a pole. And I watched this. He didn't remember all of it. He remembers getting flattened though. God, nobody touched him. Nobody touched anybody else, by the way, but he was the only one really holding on to a pole. Bless Alan. God whips up his legs. I watched this, my own eyes. Whipped up his legs, swung him one, two, three times around the pole, and bam! That was wild. I was like, whoa! Weta na Yesu orera. Seriously, that was a powerful thing to watch God literally just do that. And he'll probably share his testimony later sometime. He changed after that, did he not? Yeah, yeah. Ask his wife. Wife's spouses always know the truth. You want to know some? Ask the spouse. Serious. It was a stamping service. Now there's a stamping service, and we I actually believe there's something inside of us as we cry out that that just pleases the Lord and He just comes in there and But there's different ways that we can wake up. We had a major outpouring in that province, major outpouring, like crazy amount of churches birthed and glory fell and so much. And then just a few months ago, another force knocked everything over. Another force knocked it all over. Like knocked over all those beautiful, massive trees, some of them hundreds of years old. Another force came. Another force, some call it a force of nature, some call it uh, global warming, some call it an act of God, some call it natural disaster. We call it a cyclona. And that cyclona came. And I've prayed and prophesied over cyclonas, and, and, and they've turned around and left, and it's in the newspaper. That's the best. Like we're all, yes, I prayed and a cyclone was coming and I got out there and I'm looking at my size and I pointed and left and, and we love that and everybody's cheering if you set it up right. <laughs> but there's a different kind of cyclona. 
There's a kind of cyclone and you're praying and that cyclone, you're, you're fasting, you're praying, you've got all your leaders, people who've prayed, re- seen the dead raised in Jesus' name, the blind see, the deaf hear, the cripple walk, planted hundreds of churches. Those guys are all there. Everybody's there praying, commanding the thing to leave, declaring, decreeing, declaring, decreeing. Go. But this time with a little more faith because it's happened before. And some of the guys on our team said, we need to buy food. And I'm like, wimps. <laughs> like, where's their faith? I know we feed hungry people, but what wimps? Like, why don't we just declare the thing and it disappears? These guys call me. They're like, we're going to buy food. We're going to buy food and evacuate. You see, sometimes we want it all to look like last time. We want the glory to look like the last time the glory came. We want the power to look like the last time the power came. We want the anointing to look like the last time the anointing came. Do you know that I preached in the Western world seven years face down? I don't know why anyone asked me to come. In fact, I, I used to hear people gossiping about me in the restroom. They think it's like, Soundproof. (laughs) They just they invite that woman. She just is on the floor saying whoa, but whatever. And I'm thinking, Lord, I don't want to just. I would be so upset, and I'd be there and stick my feet up in the stall. Didn't want to recognize my shoes. Didn't want to be mocked. Didn't want to. And but then I'd get in the prayer room, and I'd be like. Okay, God, do whatever you like. And he just knocked me out. They'd throw me behind the pulpit. <laughs> that went on seven years. Not in, the, not in my world, not in my Mozambican world. I never once preached face down in Mozambique. I never once had any problem with my legs working in Mozambique. Except one time, the second time when you did show up for that stadium, nobody had seen that because God knocked me out. That was it. My legs didn't work. I praise Jesus. People were like, what happened to you? <laughs> they didn't know all those other years. I'd be like, what? They just knew the one that could stand up. Do you see what I'm saying? God, what he wants to do tonight may look different from what he did last time. What he wants to do now may look different than what he did before. But what we need to do is yield ourselves in the midst of it and let our yes be yes and our no be no. Amen. Yes. So this time the wind comes and it just flattens 90% of the buildings, all the roofs just gone, all the trees just gone. Thank God for people who heard a different plan. Thank God for people who went and bought tons of food. Thank God that we had people who could fly the bush plane. Thank God that we had trucks and drivers. Thank God that we had uh, people with chainsaws that could cut trees. Thank God we uh, we had that. But that same field where the Lord flattened thousands of people in Allen, That same field was flattened this time another way. And some of you are like, well, God, what, what do you mean? What, 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 what? I don't know all the ways of God. But I know that my yes is yes and my no is no. And, and I say yes to God. What do you want us to do now? And he says, be the feet on the ground. Be my heart. Be the feet on the ground. And you're like, but I like it when you just knock thousands of people down. That's my favorite. I like Sunday where there was dessert. I like it when God just crashes in the room and nobody can move. And I just, oh, I love that. And God just stamps and seals us. But Lord, what does my yes look like in the storm? What does my yes look like when everything's shaking to the right, to the left, to the center, behind, when things are crashing, when, when economies, I mean, there are times in, in our nation where just all the banks just 
If you don't understand how to prepare, then how do you feed tens of thousands of people? You're not prepared. And I think we need to prepare our hearts in the Western world for whatever God's going to do and however he's going to do it, whatever comes to pass, whatever is allowed, we need to be prepared to stand firm. We need to be prepared to hold on to the one who is worthy. And we need to get low. Because that's what happens in a storm. Everybody gets low. When the wind really, really, hurricane wind comes, everybody, nobody's up there going, yeah, this is great. Yay. Woo. No, nobody's up going, woo. Everybody's on their face. There's something the Lord's bringing us to face down. Now, sometimes you can just get knocked down and sometimes you can just get down. But face down is a beautiful place, a secret place place where you just get low before God. Oh. Stamping, sealing, love in our hearts, given to us by Holy Spirit, like an engagement ring. Oh, Jesus, we want more. God, this is speaking about apostolic ministry. Kind of fun. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. God always makes his grace visible in Christ, who includes us. Who? Us. He includes us as his partners in his endless triumph. Do you always feel triumphant at all times in all moments of your day and life forevermore? Kumbaya? Do you? Does anybody have that kind of life? I always think there's usually one person. Yes! Awesome. I want to stomp on your foot and watch your triumph. I mean, people, like, you're so loving, but I don't know. What, what, what's that side? It's, it's real. We are called to walk in triumphant grace, right? Endless triumph. <laughs> Listen to this. This is, <laughs> I just, <laughs> God always makes his grace visible in Christ, that's for sure, who includes us as partners of his endless triumph through our yielded lives. What? Yielded lives, through our yielded lives. What kind of yielded? Totally yielded. Laid down lover yielded. Yielded day and night. Yielded when it's hot. Yielded when it's cold. Yielded when God's glory's crashing in. Yielded when the cyclone comes. Yielded when you're on the speedboat. Yielded when it's dessert time. Yielded, yielded lives. God spreads his fragrance through yielded lives. Through yielded lives, he spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. Where? Yeah. Who? Yeah. God uses us. All of us. Or not. You can hold that pole. Eventually, though. Because he's got your number, you know. He just... <laughs> there are times he just says, you're going down. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Ask him about it later. Thank God. Because, but there's, there's several ways to carry the promises of God. You can pr carry the promise of God like Zechariah. Angel shows up. God speaks through the angel. Same angel. Big angel, Gabriel. You're going to have a son. ta -dun, ta -dun, ta -dun. He's like, wanted a son his whole life that said he was perfect. He was walking, the not perfect, but he was walking perfectly in the laws of God. That's, that's, that's right on up there. He was, he was doing well. Sarah, his old wife. I always mention the old wife. She, she was wanting a child, but she gave up by now. 
She's old. She's a, over 40. <laughs> old woman. And seriously, you know, past the... She was pushing 50, probably. No, she, we know she's old. But just saying, some of you all feel old. And, and this old woman had a promise but didn't see it. This old man, they really wanted a child, but they're barren, and the angel shows up. Boom. Shazam. Yes. And he's like, how will I know? Be kind of like me, seven days and nights on the floor. How will I know? But you know many how many times it was how will I know seriously? But because of, of how God my yes cry in that moment and what God did, some of y'all just like do that to me, do that to me. Are you ready for the cyclone? You ready for the machine guns? You ready for the jail? You ready for the stoning, the beating, the whatever? I don't know. Are you ready for your 401 to not be as steady as it was before? or something to happen that might not be in your plan. I love it when the cyclone turns. I love it when everything's glory, glory, glory. Today, as soon as I got in my room, I got a message. You know, I, I try to just turn that phone over because there's, what a, I mean, Rebecca, and I was like, there's, she does the email along with four other people, but, but the, the one thing I do is the, try to do the WhatsApp and the, ta you know, but I gave up. It's like 168 before I get from, you know, it's seriously a lot. I can't do that and get in the glory, but I knew I had to check something with our pastors, so I check it and, and I get this message. It's really important. I know what time it is. We're good. I came a long way. <laughs> yeah, seriously. 926. So we're there. I, I, you know, I'm going to soak. Do you all know what soaking is? It's awesome. I'm going to soak. We learned that in the revival renewal soaking. I got my candle, put it on. Got my worship music, put it on this beautiful room. Thank you very much. I'm in there ready to soak. And I realize I need to just, I actually, I'm soaking, but sorry. I think, okay, I'm going to check. Check out the, my pastor's group, the pastor's. And I said, and it was like, we, we don't really want to have to tell you this right now. We know you're doing a conference and you know they, we have to tell you our our um our mini bus was full of pastors this is now this is not yesterday this is right now our mini bus was full of pastors and i know all their names they're all in my in my group been discipling these guys for 15 years so so we don't stop right so they're not going to stop and we've been ministering in jails and prisons for years. Because after I got arrested, we got a letter. It's a long story, but I was able to get into jails another way. <laughs> it works. God, really, someday I'll tell you a story. So we'd been ministering in this prison for a long time. I'm not, I'm not going to mention certain things because it's, you know. So, so we... we, we stopped being able to go there because these other guys that are there now that got captured. But our brothers, our pastor brothers, our leaders felt led of the Lord to go to our farm and in, in, I'm going to zip in a boca, I, keep, I do not want to tell you things, but they wanted to go pray on the farm at night. Like, why do, you, why do they want to do that? that I would have, if they had called me, if I wasn't in a conference, I would have said, Chill on that, you know, pray, pray, pray in there, pray there where it's 
lock the door and pray there. But I didn't. I didn't know. They, they just got in this truck, this mini bus, and they went out and they made a wrong turn because there's no street lights. And they made a wrong turn and it might have even been kind of natural because for years we go in this prison and minister. But we haven't been able to go for a while because of these people that are just beyond. And and they they just before that I got a text where at the same prison, our same some of our same guys were there deciding where to drill wells because there are so many people in the prison now that we're not allowed to preach in there, but we are, they do want wells, they do want water. So I get this picture of them walking the prison yard, which I know really well, been there many, many times, and I get another picture, and then I hear what's going on. They made a wrong turn, and these, the guys that we thought were on our side the guys that we thought were on our side, when they saw the minivan, they didn't see the logo. They just saw the minivan in the dark, and so they, they completely beat up our, our, the whole minivan full of these pastors really seriously today, like seriously. And the, they said, please, no, we're Comunia Nau Colieta. You know, we're, we're these people. We're Arco Iris. We're like, we're not the Balfator. Anyway, we're, we're who we are. And they're like, okay. And they called the other pastors down the road. And they said, it's a miracle that we didn't shoot you. We, we would have we shot, but for some reason we just beat you. I want to read now John 17. Only a little bit. Verse 21, I pray for them all to be joined together as one, even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. I pray for them to become one with us so the world would recognize that you sent me. For the very glory you have given to me, I have given to them, so that they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy. You live fully in me, and now I live fully in them, sealed, 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 sealed. You live fully in me, I live fully in them, so that they will experience perfect unity. And the world will be convinced that they have sent me, for they will see that you love each one of them with the same passionate love that you have for me. Father, I ask that you allow everyone that you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they will see my full glory, the very splendor you have placed upon me because you have loved me even before the beginning of time. And I will continue to make you even more real to them so they may experience the same endless love that you have for me. For your love will now live in them even as I live in them. What is this speaking about? Question. Anybody? You raise your hand. The body. Somebody else. Unity. Somebody else. Love. Oneness. Family. Persecution, <laughs> yeah, probably. It's a lot of people, right? The, the body of Christ coming together. So here is my uh, prophetic illustration, which I rather have not experienced. The body of Christ is often doing this. We're doing that. It's like these men that attacked my dear brothers that I love 
that I've been discipling for 15 years, the ones that are old enough. They are bloody, they are bruised, they are absolutely ripped to bits. They attacked them because they thought they were the other side. They attacked them in the dark. They didn't notice the seal on the truck. They didn't notice the seal, this, this iris seal, this dove and rainbow saying, we come in peace. We come, we just were there a few days ago trying to drill a well in this very place. But in the dark, you didn't recognize us. And in the dark, before you stopped to question us, you just simply beat us. Beat us. And we're ready to shoot us, the very people that are on your side. Wake up, sleeping beauty. Wake up, bride of Christ. There's a war going on. There's a war going on. It's a real war. And there's a real war going on. And there's winds, winds, winds. There's a wind of the Spirit. And you can yield to it. You can, you can release yourself and just get undone by his love. There is a baby coming. There is a power coming. There is miracle working power of God. There's a harvest like the world has never seen coming. It is coming. It is coming. But we are in a war. How are we going to live our lives? Going to be like Zechariah? Did you think because he didn't believe the baby didn't come? The baby came. He cooperated, but the baby came. He was silent. It is the year of the voice. Will you open your voice? Will you be the voice of the one crying out? Will you be the voice of love? Will you be the voice, an apostolic voice, which means to be sent out super low, the lowest place, believe me, the lowest place place, the lowest place, the lowest place. Will you be a voice from the low place? Will you be a voice of love, a voice of mercy, a voice of kindness? Will you be a voice crying out, come, Maria? She said, yes, the same angel showed up. She was also freaked out, but she said, be it unto me, be it unto me, be it unto me. The way she lived that time was very different from the time Zechariah lived waiting. Maria, Mary sang a song. Mary sang a song of worship because she yielded herself. Was she, was she in a challenging situation? Oh yeah, a Jewish teenager. Rejoice. Rejoice with me. Everybody believe the word of the Lord. An angel showed up. Do you think everybody's going to believe everything the Lord's put inside of you? Do you think everybody's going to just say, yay, that's awesome. I'm just so excited. God hit you and you, you swam like a fish on the carpet. And now you're going to change the world. I'm really excited for you. Let our yes be yes, and our no be no. Let our heart burn with a holy fire that cannot be put out. Let us be filled with oil, the oil of intimacy every day. Let us not be shaken in the storm. Let us not be shaken in the storm. Let us fix our eyes on the prize, Jesus. Let us say that you are good in the midst of any storm, in the midst of any time. When you're giving me dessert in the presence of others who love you, or whether we're being stoned, or AKs are at our heads. My yes is a yes. It's a yes, it's a yes forever yes. Wherever you send me, it's a yes. 
I will continually cry out yes. And sometimes it's a wimpy yes. Sometimes I want to revoke my yes if I've had four hours sleep and I'm getting on another plane and, and they tell me to please enjoy the breakfast and the gym. It's like, thank you. That's wonderful. And I go in my room for the three hours and 48 minutes and I think about how I'm gonna sleep, how I'm gonna make myself fall asleep and get up in three hours and 47 minutes and carry the gospel again before they drive me down a mountain somewhere else. Will I still say yes? Will I say yes? Will you say yes? Will there be something inside of you saying yes?